ultrasound guided right internal jugular vein central venous cannulation. This is an instructional video meant as a companion piece to the simplified task analysis produced by Reddy and colleagues. The simplified task analysis can be found by following the reference below. Begin by conducting a procedural timeout. If the patient is awake, explain the procedure. Then use a checklist to review indications and contraindications for the procedure and relevant information. Perform basic hand hygiene. First remove rings and watches. Apply antibacterial soap to a cupped hand. This can also be done with alcohol-based hand rub. Rub hands palm to palm. Rub palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub right palm over left dorsum with fingers interlaced and vice versa. Rub backs of fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotational rubbing with clasped fingers of right hand in left palm and vice versa. Rotational rubbing of left thumb clasped in right palm and vice versa. Rub both wrists. Dry hands with a non-sterile towel. Set up a pre-made central venous cannulation kit by opening it aseptically on a clean trolley. This kit should contain an antimicrobial impregnated dressing, a suture, as well as a sterile gown and hat. Choose an appropriate central venous catheter. The appropriate catheter is the smallest catheter with the lowest number of lumens to meet the patient's clinical needs. Transfer sterile normal saline to a container in the central venous cannulation kit. Set up an ultrasound machine by positioning it near the head of the bed, plugging it in and turning it on, and then setting an appropriate depth, focus, and gain. Position the patient for cannulation. The appropriate position is head down, supine, and with the head rotated slightly to the left. If the patient cannot be positioned head down due to high intracranial pressure or severe heart failure, consider an alternative approach. Identify the anatomical landmarks. The landmarks are the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The landmarks can be accentuated by asking the patient to lift their head off the bed. The target is the apex of the triangle formed by the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Perform an initial ultrasound survey to identify the anatomy. You should be able to see a compressible internal jugular vein overlying a pulsatile carotid artery. Prepare for the sterile procedure by performing a full surgical scrub. Put on a surgical hat. Then put on a surgical mask. Wet your hands and arms all the way to the elbows. Apply sterile surgical scrub soap to both hands. Rub hands palm to palm. Rub palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub right palm over left dorsum with fingers interlaced and vice versa. Rub backs of fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotational rubbing with clasped fingers of right hand in left palm and vice versa. Rotational rubbing of left thumb clasped in right palm and vice versa. Continue rubbing up to the elbows while keeping hands elevated above elbows. Continue the scrub process for as long as recommended by the manufacturer of your surgical scrub soap. 
usually three to five minutes. Dry hands with a sterile towel and put on sterile gown aseptically. Have an assistant help you tie your gown and put on sterile gloves aseptically. Position yourself at the head of the bed. Prepare a sterile field, starting by sterilizing the neck with chlorhexidine swabs, rubbing in a rotational outwards pattern. Apply a sterile drape to the neck, making sure not to lose orientation of the drape. Repeat the process of sterilization with the chlorhexidine swab. Prepare your equipment for cannulation. Have an assistant help you apply a sterile ultrasound sheath to your ultrasound probe, remembering to insert sterile ultrasound gel into the sheath before applying. Do not touch the probe with your sterile gloves while applying the sheath. Secure the sheath to the probe. Prepare the guide wire by removing the cap covering the tip and withdrawing the wire in the introducer sheath until the J shape is no longer visible at the tip. Attach the needle supplied in the central venous cannulation kit to a syringe. Alternatively, if using an angiocatheter technique, attach the angiocatheter to a syringe. Ensure the angiocatheter easily slides. Prepare the central venous catheter by flushing all ports with sterile normal saline and locking all ports except the distal port. Choose a puncture site by looking again with the ultrasound probe. Anesthetize the overlying skin with local anesthetic. This may not be necessary if the patient is sedated and on an opioid infusion. We will now discuss three techniques for accessing the right internal jugular vein. The needle technique, the angiocatheter technique, and the longitudinal technique. The longitudinal technique can be done with a needle or an angiocatheter. When performing the basic needle technique, the ultrasound probe is aligned transversely to the vasculature. The internal jugular vein is identified as a compressible structure and the parotid artery is identified as a pulsatile structure. The image is aligned with the internal jugular vein in the middle, ensuring correct orientation of the probe. The needle then punctures the skin at the midpoint of the ultrasound probe at a 45 degree angle, making sure not to puncture the sterile sheath. Once the needle punctures the skin, a vacuum is made by aspirating the syringe and that vacuum is maintained by continuing to aspirate the syringe. If the tip of the needle appears to be deep, it is likely that the tip of the needle is no longer visualized and is deep to the internal jugular vein. This situation can be rectified by tilting the ultrasound probe to visualize the tip of the needle, or by slowly withdrawing the needle towards the skin. The internal jugular vein is then often encountered on the way back, as in this case. When the vein is encountered, a loss of resistance will be felt and blood will be aspirated in the syringe. Remove the syringe and confirm the blood is venous, i.e. non-pulsatile. Thread the guide wire through the needle. Do not thread the guide wire against resistance. Be careful not to thread the guide wire too deep, as a deep guide wire can precipitate ventricular arrhythmias. Once the guide wire is placed, all techniques for placing the central venous catheter are the same. The technique just discussed was the needle technique using a transverse ultrasound view. The main advantage of this technique is that it's the most simple technique to learn. A high degree of proficiency can be attained with this technique quite quickly. The cannula or angiocatheter technique is similar, but rather than using a simple needle, a needle with a sliding plastic cannula is used. The vein is punctured in the same way as with the needle technique. But once blood is aspirated in the syringe, 
the angle of the needle is dropped and the cannula is threaded over the needle into the internal jugular vein. The syringe is then connected directly to the cannula and venous blood flow is reconfirmed. The guide wire is then threaded through the cannula similarly to threading it through the needle in the first technique, making sure not to thread against resistance. The cannula is then removed. The technique just discussed is the angiocatheter or cannula technique using a transverse ultrasound view. This is arguably the safest technique as it prevents a needle puncturing the posterior wall of the internal jugular vein into a posterior common carotid artery, then causing the guide wire to be inserted into the common carotid artery and subsequently dilating it. This technique is the needle technique using a longitudinal ultrasound view. This is the same as the initial needle technique except the ultrasound probe is positioned in plane with the needle and the internal jugular vein. With good alignment of the ultrasound probe, the entire needle should be visualized. The internal jugular vein is similarly encountered as a loss of resistance at a syringe filling with venous blood. Threading the guide wire is the same as in the transverse view needle technique. If resistance is felt on the guide wire, rotating the needle may ameliorate the situation. The technique just discussed was the needle technique using a longitudinal ultrasound view. The main advantage of this technique is visualization of the entire needle as it punctures the internal jugular vein. However, with this technique, there is a significant risk of misidentifying the common carotid artery as the internal jugular vein. We now must confirm the wire lies in the internal jugular vein. This can be done by tracking its course from the skin into the vein using both a transverse and a longitudinal ultrasound view. Then trace the wire into the chest to ensure it lies in the superior vena cava. If this is the case, the wire will plunge downwards on the ultrasound screen. Once satisfied with the position of the wire, thread the dilator onto it. Then use a scalpel to make a small skin incision at the point where the wire meets the skin. Apply pressure with gauze to reduce bleeding and advance the dilator using a twisting motion. Be careful not to kink the wire with the dilator. If significant resistance is felt, it is likely that the skin incision needs to be enlarged. Thread the central venous catheter over the guide wire being careful not to advance the guide wire too deep while performing this motion. Hold the tip of the guide wire to prevent it being lost into the patient's thorax. Advance the central venous catheter to an appropriate depth. The appropriate depth is roughly 15 centimeters for an adult male. This depth can be increased or decreased at your discretion based on the patient's size. Remember to remove the guide wire. Aspirate all ports of the central venous catheter, ensuring venous blood flow. Then flush all ports with sterile normal saline. Then protect all ports of the central venous catheter with a sterile three-way connector or a sterile bung. Attach the sterile clips included with the central venous catheter at the appropriate point where the catheter meets the skin. Suture in the central venous catheter at at least two points. Here I am suturing at the clip site and at the hub. 
optionally perform a hand tie or an instrument tie. Loose knots are tied at the skin and tight knots are tied at the clip or hub. Here I am performing a drain stitch to attach to the hub. Remove the sterile drape. Then cover the central venous catheter with an antimicrobial impregnated central venous catheter dressing. Once the line is dressed, return the patient to a comfortable position. Then dispose of the sharps and contaminated material in an appropriate waste receptacle. Repeat basic hand hygiene as demonstrated at the beginning of this video. Then obtain a chest radiograph to confirm appropriate position of the central venous catheter. Monitor the patient for complications of the procedure. These complications could include hematoma at the site of insertion, excessive bleeding, pneumothorax, or arrhythmia. This image demonstrates good position of a right internal jugular vein, central venous cannula. The tip is projected over the right main stem bronchus, indicating it lies at the cavoatrial junction. The image on the right demonstrates poor position of the line and an associated large pneumothorax, likely requiring urgent chest drainage. This instructional video has been produced in association with the Irish Centre for Applied Patient Safety and Simulation. Related training videos for other intensive care procedural skills can be found below. Associated task analyses are available in the research article linked at the beginning of this video.